Well, folks, good day to you one and all, and welcome to Sports and GT round number seven, season number 10. Can you believe it? And the voice that's been with us uh, from back in the day, the voice of Western Province Motorsport, Frankie Hearness, joining me in the studio in the friendly city of Cape Town and the uh, suburb of Velgelegen. Frankie Hearness, good evening to you. Gary, good day. And everybody else, yes, I didn't do the last two took a bit of a sabbatical but it's back actually said to the missus i'm beginning to miss it and uh yes good to be back and we come to you from the a1 ring in the city of spielberg in austria uh or previously known as the a1 ring it's now obviously called the red bull ring and we are on board with uh, luke lucchese as he busy works his way around the Red Bull Ring in Spielberg in Austria. Well, the man that goes to the uh, top end of the field is uh, Willem Boerter. Willem Boerter has just taken over from Ryan Ottens. And uh, he gets himself right there where it counts. Willem Boerter, Ryan Ottens, the second fastest man out there. Peter van der Spee has been blindingly quick. He's in fact the uh, third fastest right now. And uh, Michael Steven now goes up to the third fastest. Yes, Michael Steven working his way around in the uh, Masters category. As we keep an eye on him, busy working his way around the ring. The moment we've got all the little issues sorted out, we'll get all the necessary up on the uh, screen for you. The uh, battle box, the track map, and of course the positions on track. Otherwise you at home are going to have no idea what's uh, going on. Leon van Wijk is the man that's out on the circuit right now. He's uh, van Wijk. And uh, Sandra Bakari, he is in the Grand Master category. That's a driver's 60 and over. He's Sandra Bakari. He'll be there with uh, Peter van der Spey and probably a few others he's in the sunoka racing outfit uh, radical sr8 that the guys are busy racing in Willem Pina is busy working his way around the track so we've got no times coming through yet there we go Ray ryan ottens is the quickest man out there at this point in time with a 125.321 he's in pit lane look is uh three Hundreds of a second behind Ottens, currently in that second position is Luke Lucchese. And, uh, well, Luke Lucchese has just actually gone to the top. As Frankie looks away to see where I'm going to go, a 124.801 for Luke Lucchese. So Luke Lucchese and Ryan Ottens find themselves alongside one another, provisionally 5 minutes 25 into the uh, quality session jj van der Merwe, he's best to date in the 167 car in his favorite color green then it's Willem Boerter. that's the man that uh, rounds out the second row of the grid but keep in mind we've still got a couple of minutes to go timothy stanton frankie just really hitting the heights recently in i racing well yes he sits there in p5 and he's seven thousandths of a second off Willem Boerter. he's uh, stanton in that uh, fifth position there's michael steven michael did pretty well last weekend at uh, kyalami he was racing the uh, fly sapphire uh, bmw in the sa touring car series he stood in for andrew schofield and uh, he didn't do half bad at all as we are with sandra vacari sandra currently in p7 but he is leading in qualifying the grand masters category as opposed to Peter van Spain, who's the next man in the Grand Masters. He's in 12th position. Then down in 16th, we have Willem Pinar. A little bit further back, we have the man from uh, the BMW side of the world in uh, Port Elizabeth. And uh, he's a main circuit racer. He's Ian Lurdell. Ian Lurdell finds himself just behind Colin Plitt. Slightly different uh, monster kind of colors that's going down there so Robbie Teens, Dochaba and Peter Hubert have not got lap times up yet there is uh, Dochaba he's coming up to ooh, ooh, using the track and more he looks a bit desperate with just 10 minutes to go 
and uh, let's see who does though pops up into the 19th position let's have a look at that front end of the field well look the keys he is still there but look who's joined him frankie yes graham stephen he is the 10th oh and Ooh. funner marva goes wow. up to second and then drops down to third JJ, I don't know what they fed JJ this morning. I but, want whatever uh, he's been drinking. It, it, it's worked for him, that's for sure. And Timothy Stanton as well. Was well, in P4, um, drops down to P5 uh -huh. now, as Puerta goes up to fourth. Well, um, in the house, and that drops Timothy Stanton down to that fifth position. Ryan Ottens getting knocked down. Where's Ryan Ottens? Let's see what happens when he comes up and uh, completes the lap. Surely Ryan Ottens can get higher up than that seventh position. He's been banged seven tenths out. Look, the keys, he's still the fastest man. Ryan Ottens has not gone any quicker. Another shocker, Frankie, apart from JJ, Andre Stienkamp. Yep, the man that races karting at the Western Province karting section, sitting there in P8, eight tenths of a second off Luke Lucchese. He's uh, Andre Steenkamp sitting there in uh, P8 in the Batmobile. And uh, as a mat matter of fact, um, uh, Maverick Vinales last weekend had the Batman sticker on his helmet for MotoGP. I don't know how many of you folks watched the MotoGP last weekend uh, from the Circuit of the Americas. He had the Batman sticker on. Of course, we know Andre Steenkamp races the Batmobile. There's Johan Engelbrecht. He's in P15 and 1.448 seconds off Luke Lucchese. Robbie Teens, the uh, original comeback kid. And I think we've got a new comeback kid in the game now with uh, what we've seen recently. But Robbie Teens, 17th. And um, that finds Robbie Teens third overall in the Grand Masters class. Raymond Duncan's doing a pretty decent job by getting himself uh, further and further up the road there. I see Colin Plitt. Wayne Masters. Wayne Masters a long, long way down. Surely 2.5 seconds off. That's not the Wayne Masters we know. Watch him bump himself up with less than a half a minute to go. Talking about Wayne Masters, he and brother Bevan Masters raced in the pay bar uh, Volkswagen Challenge at Kailami last weekend in Class A. And both Wayne and Bevan did exceptionally well. In Class A in Paybar VW Challenge at Kailami for the Extreme Festival National and Regional. There's Raymond Duggan. He sits in that seventh position, seven tenths of a second off provisional pole sitter Luke Lucchese. But I think Luke will be the pole sitter because the qualifying stint has now officially ended. Yep, it's time for us to have a look at that grid and let's see how does that grid look. Well, in between the Red Bull signs, you see Luke Lucchese from Graham Stephen. Row 2, JJ van der Merwe, Magic Stuff from Willem Boerta. Row 3 is Timothy Stanton from Leon van Wyk. Row 4, Raymond Duggan from Ryan Ottens. Row 5, Robert Briggs from Andre Steenkamp. Row 6, Michael Stephen, Carl Lawrence. Row 7, Johan Engelbrecht, Jacky Stein. Row 8, Do Gerbe and Herman Lazarus. Row 9, Wayne Masters and Wesley Lewin. Row 10, Swayze Hubert and Peter Hubert. And then, yeah, that's now split the, uh, because second o overall, you see, they've now split the Masters from the Grand Masters. So, pole position for them will be Sander Bakari from Peter van der Spey. But, uh, so there's the back end of the grid yeah, now. That's the tail end of the yeah. grid, yeah, just uh, behind. Pina, Samai, Gerber, Lazarus, Riddle, Masters, Lewin, Bakari, Jube, oh, both of the Jubes coming off the back end of the pack. Wow, yeah. that's something else. Swiss and Peter. Yo, well, you can see some freaking flyers coming from that side. Uh, there's no doubt about it. So let's have a look, see how this one's going to play itself out. Let's get a battle box up there. Let's get a track map up there for you as well. We can see exactly I was going to say, at. Gary, go one o'clock high for the one, track map one o'clock high bang there we go and it is graham stephen that's at the front end of the pack he'll be loving this himself and look at the kizzy what an amazing view 28 entries when last have you seen two jubes at the back end of the pack right there you see them all racked and stacked remember they're going to do two 25 minute races and there will be a compulsory pit stop. You can put at the end of lap one. You can put whenever you like. 
but you have to do one compulsory pit stop and if you make 25 errors you will get a drive through with no disqualification so this is going to be pretty interesting to watch how this one's going to play itself out at the front end of the field. Graham Steven going one on Luke Lucchese. Now JJ van der Meerbe, Willem Boerter. They sort of like not always right at the front end. And Timothy Stanton is right in there as well with that fifth position alongside the very quick Leon van Beek. Leon van Beek is the white car on the outside as they work their way down towards turn number one. Van Veek's going to lose out pretty heavily because Sandra Bakari is going three abreast and diving his way through and up into uh, seventh position, sixth position is Sandra Bakari. JJ Fomeva, Fomeva just in front of him. But remember, Sandra Bakari is one of the grand masters. Luke Lucchese leads him out from uh, Graham Stephen. Then it's Willem Boerter, Timothy Stanton, JJ Van Amava, the leading master, Sandra Vicari. A little bit of chaos almost happening behind that with Raymond Duggan from Leon van Veek. Ryan Otten's a long, long way down and uh, rounding out the top 10, Carl Lawrence. That's a top 10 <clears throat> as they make their way into a very tricky uh, right-hander working their way around. Remember the final corner on this track is known as the Nicky Lauda corner. There's Lawrence. There's... Carl Lawrence, seven tenths of a second off Ryan Ottens. Sandra Bacardi, man, leading Grandmaster in P6. Timothy Stanton is just ahead of JJ Fanamadova, the two green cars. Fanamadova is all green. Stanton is the green with the black on. And then we see Bacardi right in there with him. Stanton sitting up there in P4. Here he comes towards us. There's Stanton just behind him is Fanamadova. And behind Fanamadova is Bacardi followed there by Raymond Duggan. So we've got somebody that's diving into the pits. That's Michael Steven. Michael Steven with damage that goes into the pits. Where are we? We're at the Red Bull ring and it is Luke Lucchese that's just put up the fastest lap. Yeah, 127.341 for Lucchese of Pantera Racing and Race Driver SA is uh, Luke Lucchese, the number 124 car. But uh, Willem Boerta and Graham Steven are basically side by side. As a matter of fact, Sandra Bakar has got his nose ahead there of JJ van der Merwe and Timothy Stanton is uh, working his way up as well. Not too far behind Stanton, somebody losing the circuit there. I think that might have been Raymond Duggan. Timothy Stanton is right there in P4, two tenths of a second of Graham Steven, who is three tenths of a second of Willem Boerta, who is two seconds behind race leader Luke Lucchese. Well, I must say, look, he has a massive battle right towards the back end of the field. This is Colin Plitt, Willem Pina, Robert Briggs, and Yaz Samai. They've been swapping positions. Rack Pepton stacked between them. Another man that's on the move right now is Raymond Duggan, and he's all onto the back of the JJ Funamava car. But remember, the uh, car in fifth position is in fact a grand master it's sandro bakari and he's got big names behind him a brilliant drive so far by sandro bakari and he's got jason panameva raymond duck and carl lawrence between him himself and that man second overall in class robbie teams is the next man through and that is the original comeback kid then it's johan engelbap and yaku stein then we go back to Colin Plitt, fourth in the Masters with a Willem Pina that is fifth in the Masters class. Luke Lucchese having just posted yet another fast lap. But the new kid on the block, Timothy Stanton, is on the move. He's within a half a second of Graham Stephen. Yeah, Graham Stephen's going to have to get a move on. He's five tenths of a second ahead of Stanton at this point in time. Johan Engelbrecht had a look there. And uh, Engelbrecht sitting there in P11. He and Robbie Teams, they are basically side by side. Teams on his left hand side, Engelbrecht on his right hand side. As they work their way into the tricky right hand, the line should belong to. Oh. If they don't make contact, it would belong and does belong to Johan Engelbrecht. And uh, Robbie Teams will be dropping down that leaderboard now. Yep, that drops him a long way down, and that's not what you want to have. So let's have a look from the top end down, starting off with that man. It is Luke Lucchese that leads him out. Then it is Willem Boerta, Graham Steven, Timothy Stanton, Sandra Bakari, JJ Fanamava, Raymond Duggan. He's done a nice job as Raymond Duggan. He's just point four behind it. JJ Fanamava, who has dropped down a little. Carl Lawrence, he's best showing to date is Carl Lawrence as a new uh, fastest lap gets put up there by Luke Lucchese. We're having a look at Carl Lawrence. Peter Van Spey in there behind him. 
Behind that is Johan Engelberg, then Jaku Stein. He's made up a whole bunch of positions. Colin Plitt with Yatsa Mai that almost got himself off the track in the middle of the straight. The asymmetric racing there for Yasa Mai, car 102 sitting in P13. P14 behind him is uh, Willem Pina representing Ireland and then Peter Hubert in P15, five tenths of a second off him and he's in that bright yellow car. There's Andre Stenkamp, where's the Batmobile? There it is. And he's just, just behind Wayne Masters. He will lunge up on the inside but Wayne will have that line covered and he will keep Andre Stenkamp behind him. JJ van Amava, although he's dropped down to seventh position all over the back end of the uh, very highly acclaimed Raymond Duggan. Luke Lekiz is checking out at the front end of the field. He has put up a couple of fastest laps already. Let's have a look at the pit stops. One or two of the uh, bigger names that have gone in. Michael Steven, Ryan Ottens and Robert Briggs have all been into pits already. Remember, you can go in at the end of lap number one and you can fuel it fat and uh, make it all the way to the end. Have they made the right decisions? Talking about the right decisions, starting at the back of the pack and moving up is Piri Hubert. Remember, the two Hubert started right at the back of the pack. He's gone through almost half the field. The Pains Oil entry is on the move, Peter Hubert. Yeah, Swayze Hubert still stuck out there in P21. He's a second behind Herman Lazarus, so he didn't quite make the move through the field that uh, Peter Hubert did. Peter Hubert right on the case of the man from Ireland. That's uh, Willem Pinar, two tenths of a second between P13 and 14. And just ahead of them, you see the brightly colored car of Yas Samai and uh, Jacques Stein just ahead of them. But you race here with Peter Hubert in the Pennzoil outfit. And he is four tenths of a second behind Pinar in the Castrol outfit. So the two oil companies going one on one Castrol versus Pennzoil. And ahead of them is Yasamai. And if you look at the last lap times, he's in fact taken half a second out of Willem Pinar on the last uh, time around. And it's Peter van Spey that's starting to go on the hunt now as well. Yeah, Fana Spey, three tenths of a second of Carl Lawrence, and he's a second ahead of Johan Engelbrecht, he's Fana Spey, and he sits uh, second in the Grand Masters category, does Peter Fana Spey, and he is two tenths of a second off Carl Lawrence, that's in P8, and he will be challenging Lawrence for that eighth position on circuit. Yeah, he's, he's almost onto the back of Carl Lawrence already, so the, oh, another faster slap, look, look, easy, 24. Point of four one two, and that is the better part of uh, about three tenths that is taken out of the man behind him. Another two tenths lower is a Graham Stephen, but quicker than Graham Stephen is Timothy Stanton. So Timothy Stanton, apart from a disastrous last week, the last four weeks before that was just getting better and better. Last week it didn't work out for him on the race face. Uh, race that he had it didn't work out for him in the master series either but he's back in a top form right now as Johan Engelbrecht has just uh, made the move up I think or oh, Peter van der Spey's had an accident Peter van der Spey dropping down the field let's see what happened to Peter yeah if we can pick up a replay there there is van der Spey in the 201 car and he was on the case of Carl Lawrence and I still said he was challenging Carl for that P8 uh, and just turns the sports car around the radical sr8 around and now we'll lose tons of ground as the other drivers just falter past the other one that happened early on the Leonardo Bacari the brother of Sandro Bacari the man that has uh, moved out oh he was in the wilds too hard and too deep and that Frankie is why Swiss Hubert is so far down because Swiss Hubert was on the other side of that just missing the brake pedal completely comes diving and tries to miss everybody but no can do nowhere to go now a little bit earlier on there was an incident for Andre Stienkamp that dropped him down and we saw that he's gone right down the leaderboard Andre Stienkamp came in very tight ran it out very wide almost did a beautiful drift session locks it up completely but just uh, so many cars so close to one another they just come piling past him and he lost a better part of like nine positions in that little session that he had there. The man up front, Luke Lucchese. Yep, Luke Lucchese, race driver, SA Pantera Racing. He's 4.7 seconds ahead of Graham Steven. That's in that second spot. And it's quickest lap after quickest lap for Lucchese. But uh, Graham Steven 
He's been hassled here heavily by Willem Boerta. Two tenths of a second between P2 and 3 between Steven and Boerta. Then Timothy Stanton. He's one and a half seconds off uh, Boerta. He's Stanton in P4. Who's nearly two and a half seconds ahead of Sandra Bakari. P5 and leading the Masters. JJ van der was right on his case. Here comes Raymond Duggan in P7. That is the top seven. Nearly five seconds behind him is Carl Lawrence. And Carl Lawrence is just under a second ahead of Johan Engelbrecht. That rounds off the top nine. And then we've got uh, the Mountain Dew car right. As a matter of fact, Jakob Stein has now gone past because Engelbrecht is making his way into the pit area. Yep, and there comes Jan Samai as well. He works his way through. Johan Engelbrecht goes into the pit lane. So going past that will be Willem Pina. Then it will be Robbie Teens, Peter van der Spey, rounding out the top 15. Jan Engelbrecht into the pit lane. Yep, Engelbrecht uh, in for his pits. Remember, you can stop as many times as you like, but you have to do one compulsory pit stop. Yeah, and look at this fight for P2 and 3 between Graham Steven and Willem Boerta. Two tenths of a second separating them and not far behind them. A second, 1.6 is Timothy Stanton. There you see the three of them in the same shot and Boerta wants through. He wants through on Graham Steven. He's two tenths of a second uh, that is splitting the two of them. That's all. And if he can't get through quick enough, it will bring Stanton into play. But yeah, Stanton is still one and a half seconds behind the Steven Boerta combination. This is one hell of a battle between the two of them as they work their way through towards that next right-hander using the whole track and a bit more. Oh, you can see the tail end just wanting to slide out on that motor car. And in fact, that was diving into the pits. That's what made the difference. Willem Boerta has gone in. Timothy Stanton comes past. Willem Boerta has gone into the pit lane, so JJ van der is going to come through. Raymond Duggan, Sandra Bakari is coming through as well. Not that far behind it. A good drive by Carl Lawrence. Yakustain up into the top 10. He brings with him Yasumai. Piri Ube is up into 11th position. 17 places up in the Pennzoil Radical is a Piri Ube. But now, let's have a look at the pit stops. How does that one play out in terms of where they are at? Well, it looks like the leading man is in fact a villain Boerta that has been into the pits. Then Michael Steven. Don't forget about Michael Steven. He's not completely out of it. Peter van der Spey has been in. So has Ryan Ottens. Ryan Ottens, I think, is completely out of it. I don't think it is going to work for him. But Piri Hubert is siding his way through the field. He's one of the quickest out there right now. But as you said, keep an eye on Michael Steven. He put it at the end of lap number one. He sits in P18. So when the other guys put, he could work his way through. Talking about Michael Steven. There you see Michael Steven, three tenths of a second off in order of a as we hop on board in the cockpit with the cockpit cam of Michael Steven. As I said, a man that did very well in the SA Touring Car Series last weekend at Kyle Army, driving Andrew Schofield's Fly Sapphire car. He sits there in P18 and he's challenging Bakari. Moves to the right, moves to the left, takes the line <laughs> for the left hander and makes the move stick there on Bakari. What a move that was. They eh? go to the right, uh, show the dummy, go to the left and just fly straight past. Fly Sefi, fly straight past. That's what Michael Steven does. So now he's going to be coming up on the back end of Hamon Lazarus. And Lazarus is six positions up. Michael Steven is four down, but Michael Steven has been into the pits. So in effect, on track, he's behind Hammond Lazarus, but not actually. Yas Samaya not into the pits, all for them Pina. They are respectively 13 and uh, Pity You Bear up 19 positions. We've got to go on board with Pity You Bear. This man is cooking. Okay. And he's now got space in front of him, Frankie. Uh, Pity You Bear is, uh, well, he's got a bit of uh, traffic on his right hand side. That's Willem Boerter that uh, decided to make the move. So was that Willem Boerter that actually passed him or was that Willem Boerter that was in front of him? I think he was actually trying to make the move, couldn't make it stick. And we're about to see uh, Peter Hubert, the man that's gone up 18 positions, hasn't been into the pits yet, closing down on Willem Werther. Yeah, and while we were talking, uh, Jakob Stein went into the pit area, he's back out again, but he finds himself in 23rd position, does uh, Jakob Stein, as we ride aboard here with uh, Peter Hubert. That's in P10, 5 tenths of a second off Werther, two and a half seconds off Robbie Teens. 
that uh, remember Robbie Teens also dropped down that leaderboard earlier on. He's gone up a whole heap of positions as Robbie Teens uh, when he was involved with contact earlier on. He sits now in P9, does uh, Robbie Teens, but there's Robert Briggs now. Robbie sits there in P19, but he was also one of the drivers that made an earlier pit stop together with Michael Steven. Yep, Jakub Steen, I think, has just come out of the pits, and I think Jakub Steen has just had an incident. That's the Mountain Dew car, the one that's in front, hard on the gas, just a little bit too much curb stone, ends up pointing in the wrong direction by the time he gets the 188 to Mountain Dew Radical SR8 back onto the track. Well, yeah, he's a bit slow when he got back on, but looks like it's all good. So he's got that one sorted out. Lost a fair amount of time, but not too bad. Pity Bear has, in fact, gone into the pits, and so has Willem Pinar is into the pits as well. In fact, I think uh, well, Willem Pinar is in. I think Pity Bear is, in fact, on his way out of the pits already. Yep, there he is. He's already out of the pits. So from the top and down, we are 15 almost 16 minutes into the 25 and it is of the guys that have not been into the pits well Willem Boerte is the lead man that has been into the pits but look look easy leads them out very handsomely from a Graham Stephen there you see Graham Stephen and uh, Timothy Stanton brilliant drive by Phil. Timothy Stanton once again and a brilliant drive by JJ Fanamaba. he's holding on to that fourth position Sandra Bakari is there such a word as brilliant -er? Because that's my word for the day. Well, I'm going to tell you something. It's the best that I've seen JJ van der Merwe race ever. Yes. And yes. Uh, I've always said I would like to see him up front when he was racing with the uh, Mercedes-Benz. But obviously the Merck uh, didn't do it for him. Sandra Bakari, P5 and P1 in class. That's the man we're riding on board with. Looking at uh, Raymond Duggan. That's in there behind him. Three tenths of a second splitting the two of them. But of course, uh, Bakari is in a different class to... Uh, Duggan, Duggan's in the Masters and Bakari is in the Grand Master category. That's Yasamai coming through. He's in P7. He's seven and a half seconds off Duggan. There is uh, Willem Boerta and he has got Robbie Teens uh, in there behind him. There's only seven tenths of a second between them. Robbie Teens, of course, is sitting second in the Grand Masters. Wayne Masters and uh, Michael Stevens. <laughs> look, look, Kezi. Does it 124-1 and there was a passing maneuver that just took down there. There was Michael Stephen going past a Wayne Masters and uh, into the pits goes Graham Stephen. Into the pits goes Sandra Bicari. Into the pits goes Raymond Duggan and Yaz Samai. What does Willem Boerter do? We're about to find out. He's a little bit further back because Willem Boerter is going to see if he can jump them because me, Willem Boerter has been into the pits already as has Graham Stephen. Is this where he jumps them all? Well, it might not be because Graham Stephen is on his way out of the pits. Where is Willem Boerter? He can't be far away. And oh, Willem Boerter trying just too hard. He knew he had to get a couple of tenths out of it. Wasn't able to. Raymond Duggan's now on his way out as is Yasumai directly behind him. Into the pits has gone uh, the comeback kid, Robbie Teens. Uh, and uh, I think it's Colin Plitt that's gone through there as well as Herman Lazarus has now gone uh, back in. So who has not been in? He will over, overshot the pits there. So that cost him. And Luke Lucchese is coming. Luke Lucchese is in. That means that Timothy Stanton. How far is Timothy Stanton behind? Here he comes along now. Less than uh, 500 meters. Timothy goes in. JJ Funamava. Will he follow suit? Yes, he does. So where is Graham Stephen? Here he comes. He's still 1.1 kilometers further back. I think that Luke Lucchese is going to come out at the front end of the field. I don't think they have a problem. Graham Stephen with those three cars that's in front of him. And uh, Luke Lucchese is already on the pit exit. There's Luke Lucchese. There's Timothy Stanton. There is uh, JJ Funamava. Where's Graham Stephen? Here he comes now. Graham Stephen. Will Timothy make it out in time? There's Timothy. Where's Graham Stephen? Oh, here he comes. It's going to be either way. Stephen will hold it. He's got the momentum. He's got the drive. He's got the speed. He will come out. Timothy Stanton might even lose out to Buerta. Buerta's right there on his left-hand side. There you see Fanamarva and Samai just behind them. They are literally side by side, the two of them. 
and the right hander will belong to oh, Boata loses the tail end. Yeah. Boata lost the tail end there, but while all this was busy happening, Michael Steven has worked his way up into P6. I was keeping an eye on him, and he's eight tenths of a second off uh, Van der Merwe. There's Van der Merwe, the green car, and there's Steven just behind him. And then five seconds behind him, you pick up the leading grandmaster, the Sunoco uh, outfit of Sandra Bakari. Sandra Bakari, brilliant form. And uh, Peter van der Spey further back finds himself in second position in class 13 overall. The comeback king, Robbie Teens, that's the red and white one. You can see him just behind that. There is Robbie Teens. He's third in class. A little bit further back, there is Ian Riddle. He's 18th overall. And a fourth in class is Ian Riddle. And then further back will be Colin Plitt. Leonardo Bakari is the next one. But look at that having a go. And at the same time, Robert Briggs is trying to have a go at Robbie Teens. Now, that was Leon van Weyck that was... Uh making a move there there's Ian Riddle Ian Riddle all the way down in P19 he lost that position to uh, Van Vijk Van Vijk just made the move there on Riddle there we go that's the move I was talking about early on the DHL car just moving right out the way the being IT man of Leon Van Vijk car 179 making the move there on Ian Riddle Michael Stevens getting very close to JJ Van der Marvel, who's having probably the race of his life right now and uh I hope for Jason van der Merwe that he holds on to that fifth position. No disrespect to Michael Steven, but I mean, wow, he's having such a brilliant drive. Timothy Stanton will be coming accustomed to him being right there uh, and thereabouts. No doubt that uh, he has upped his game, be it on equipment, of practice, uh, getting an eye in a VR headset, whatever. Timothy Stanton is uh, really the guy that has made probably the most improvement in the last six months out of everybody apart from ryan ottens that's had good and he's had bad and unfortunately this one ryan ottens finds himself down in eighth position there he is and the man that's uh, 2.7 seconds ahead of him is in fact the leading grand master the sonoka entry that frankie just referred to earlier on as we go back to michael steven tracking down on a jj van and it all goes wrong. JJ van der Merwe had an incident. Let's have a look. Yeah, van der Merwe, but I saw uh, Steven off the track as well. As a matter of fact, uh, they made contact with each other right there by pit entry. And van der Merwe finds himself in trouble. And so is Michael Steven. Then the Sunoco car goes through in the replay of uh, Sander Bakari. Duggan goes through. Yasamai goes through as well. And JJ says, no, let's uh, hit the pit lane. I think he was actually battling to get that car into gear or something or other. So it all turns to dust for JJ Fanamaeva. It was so great up until then. We're running out of time. Let's run through the field, Frankie, from the top end down. And I just said this is the best I've ever seen Fanamaeva do. Yep. Talk about commentator's curse. Right, Luke Lucchese sits out there in P1. He is nearly 14 seconds ahead, 13.3 to be exact, of Graham Stephen. That is in that second position, who's 1.2 seconds ahead of Timothy Stanton. That's nothing between the two of them. There you see 4.7 seconds behind is Willem Boerta. And then 6.3 behind him and leading the Grand Masters is Sandro Bakari. He's got Michael Steven right on his case. Juan Otten's on his case. Raymond Duggan on his case. Yasamai is on his case as well. Here comes Kyle Lawrence. And Lawrence is only 5 tenths of a second ahead of Johan Engelbrecht. Then Peter van der Spey coming through, that sits second in class. Robbie Briggs coming towards us. Peter Hubert is right on his heels and so is the comeback kid, Robbie Teens. And then in P16 is the Batmobile of Andre Steenkamp. That's the top 16. P17 is Leon van Weyck, two seconds ahead of Ian Riddle. That's coming through there, followed by Wayne Masters. And right on his case is Wesley Lewin, who's side by side there with Herman Lazarus, followed there by Yucky Stein. That's a top 22. 23rd is Colin Plitt and he is six seconds ahead there of Willem Pina. Sway Schubert is in 25th position uh, followed there by Leonardo Bakari. Van der Merwe is in the pits and a DNF for Doe 
Gerbe. Or DN, yeah, did not finish for Dou Gerbe. So on the last lap now, already the white flag has come out for Luc Lekesi. And look how the battles are hotting up now. Everything that's in orange is less than half a second. And has Luc Lekesi already completed? Yes, he has. Luc Lekesi comes across the line. He's so far ahead of everybody. And the next man to come through, a lovely drive. Once again, Graham Stephen. Timothy Stanton, six tenths of a second, top three, P3 for Stanton of uh, Roland uh, Manifolds. Willem Boerta, race driver, SAE Sports, he will finish there in P4, nearly four and a half seconds ahead of uh, Michael Stevens, who's got Ryan Ottens and Sandra Bakari and Raymond Duggan and Yasamai right on his heels. Next man coming through there, Carl Lawrence from Johan Engelbrecht. Here comes Pino van Spey in 12th overall. Pity you bear that started right at the back of the pack, has worked his way all the way up to a 13th overall ahead there of uh, Robbie Teens and Andre Steenkamp. Robert Briggs to the line just ahead of uh, Leon van Veik. Wayne Masters that was right at the back of the pack. He's made up a good couple. He's got up to 18th. From Wesley Lewin, Hamann Lazarus will be very disappointed. Jakub Stein, Colin Plitt, and then Ian Riddle working Ooh. his way through as well. Ian Slowing right down is going to lose positions, Ian Riddle. He's not even at the checkered flag yet. Has he run out of fuel? Is it possible? Oh, this is how look at Did the he do a pit stop? Quickly? That's the question. He was supposed to do one pit stop, Ian Riddle. He did? He wow. did do a pit stop, but he must have short fuel. Did it. he under fuel? Well, either way, whatever he did, he got it wrong because, uh, well, he's... Uh, he limps across the line. Mother Nature helps him across the line. Can you believe it? Wow, that was a goodie. So we're probably going to have a little uh, two-minute warm-up that's going to come up now. Let's see if we can get up those uh, overall results for you for heat number one. Let's just give the uh, computer an opportunity to bring it up for us. Should be around about now. Let's go to the top end of that. Oh, there we go. So, race driver SA and Pantera Racing taking 14, almost 15 seconds out of the nearest rival in Graham Stephen in the 1-1-2. Timothy Stanton once again in the uh, top three. Brilliant stuff. Uh, he had a little bit of disappointment last week in the uh, Tuesday night race, which was the GT4 series under Race Pro or Race Face. And uh, then it also went a little bit wrong for him with the uh, Masters series as well. But he bounced back from that with the Roland Manifolds entry. The 177 coming up in the top three ahead of the highly acclaimed and uh, knowledgeable Willem Boerte. And uh, then the second of the Stephen brothers. Graham in second. Michael Stephen rounding out the top five. I've got a difficult problem here to a driver of race number one. I want to say Timothy Stanton. But, the name but then on the other hand, I want to say Sandro Bakari, Bakari as well. <laughs> yep. I think you've got to give it to Sandro Bakari. That yes. was brilliant. The qualifying was amazing. The race pace was amazing. He was right in there. And if you think he's in seventh, his nearest rival, Peter van der Spey, is down in 12th position. I would tend to make him the driver of that one. And we've got two minutes of the warm-up left. Let's go a little bit further down. Carl Lawrence from Jan Engelbrecht, Peter van der Spey, Peter Jubey, Robbie Teens, Andre Steenkamp, Robert Briggs, Leon van Veik, and Wayne Masters that rounds that uh, top 18 out. And I do believe we are just about at the end of that little warm-up session. And, uh, well, Frankie, if I've got it correct, you'll probably find that they're going to have an inverted grid. And that'll be the front uh, 10. Oh, sorry, it's a three-minute warm-up session. So we got a couple of sec. So if they do a top 10 invert, let's just see how that one then would play itself out. Who was the 10th man? Carl Lawrence and yes, my Mr. Porsche. That's going to be on the front row. The good Raymond Duggan, Sandra Bakari on the second row. Ryan Ottens, sixth. Mm, I think you'll fancy going a little bit higher up than that. But remember, if Ryan Otten starts in that fourth position, second row on the outside, he's got the freaking flyers in there behind him. And Michael Steven, Willem Boerte, Timothy Stanton, Graham Steven, and Luke Lukesi as well. 
So, let's hope it's not going to be Car Wars going into that very tight turn the number one before so, you race so, up so that we long want, hill. we want Star Wars, not Car Wars. No, no, no. We don't <laughs> want uh, Car Wars. Warm-up is done. Three minutes is finished. They will now just go onto the grid. And then we will start the second 25 minutes lap. No DQ. Put stop at the end of lap one or whenever you like. And 25 X's, you will get a drive through penalty. So, haha, Lawrence and Samai, row one, Duggan and Bakari, row two, Ottens and Stephen, row three, Boot and Stanton, row four, Stephen and Lucchese, row five, Engelbrecht and Van Espey, row six, row seven, Espita Hubert, Robbie Teens, row eight, Steenkamp and Briggs, row nine, Van Vaak and Masters, row ten, Lewin and Lazarus, row 11, Stein and Plitt, row 12, Pinar and Hubert, row 13, Bakari and Riddle, and row 14, Van der Merwe and Gerber. Well, we come to you once again, Spielberg, the Red Bull Ring in Austria, in the Radical SR8, as uh, the cars are all lined up there. I think they lined up just that little, that little horseshoe section, and then they will move off to their left. And then they'll work their way towards the start-finish line between the Porsche or behind the Porsche that is the safety car. Wow. Race number one was brilliant. Season number 10, race number seven, Red Bull Rink, the Radical SR8. This is the second 25-minute race for the day. For those of you who joined us late, hello. Nice to have you guys with us. Hope you are uh, enjoying the sights and sounds of the West Province Sports and GT Masters and Grand Masters, the 10th series. And it's all started out with uh, the doc himself from Kalani International Sports and GT. Mm, Dr. Mike Verrier is the man that started off. He himself races a BMW Z4 now in the uh, uh, Sports and GT series at uh, Kalani International Raceway. Right, that's out of the final corner. The pit lanes on the right hand side. The safety cars already moved down that pit lane. It's now in the hands of Lawrence and Samai. That's the front row of the grid. Pressure. And uh, watch out for that man in P10. And off we go. And a lovely, lovely start there by Carl Lawrence as we go to green. Carl Lawrence racing down to turn number one. He got just a bit of the start off the line there from Yasamai. Look at oh, and Sandra Bakari makes a contact there with Yasamai. And there is that chaos going into the tight right-hander that is turn one. Yep, unfortunately, a bit of uh, chaos there. But Carl Lawrence, I, I think he actually climbed on the gas before the lights changed. But behind him is Raymond Duggan, Willem Boerter, Ryan Ottens on the outside line trying to drive a right around the outside. But if anything, Willem Boerter is going to go up on the inside of Raymond Duggan. There comes Luke Lucchese directly behind them. That's the red one. He's followed through by Mr. Michael Steven. Yeah, and Johan Engelbrecht and Graham Steven. There you see Peter Hubert right on the outside. He is going to have, that's Timothy Stanton. That's going to come through there as well. Uh, Van der Spey is dropping down the leaderboard. Oh, there's lots of them dropping down that leaderboard. There's chaos out there. We'll put on the track map so we can see more or less where that happened. Well, they just plowed into it. The two Castrol cars was also involved in that, as of which one of them is Bacardi, the other one is Pinar. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, oh, Swiss Hubert was in that one as well. He had nowhere to go at that stage of the fight, and uh, Leonardo Bacardi finding himself right in the middle of that. Michael Steven, lap number one is in. Graham Steven, they must be chatting on the radio to decide when to go and get out of the traffic get into the pits and uh, get out again with some open space in front of you. Sandra Bacardi, oh, oh, look at that one. That was very, very sideways. Gets it back on track. I mentioned car wars, and that's exactly what's happened out there. Raymond Duggan losing the tail end, and uh, he slides it around on the grass. And just out of shot there, there's another car that lost the tail end as well. That's Wayne Masters. That would be look at that group of cars making its way into the pit area. Yes, it is indeed, Wayne Masters. It also lost the tail end there. 
it looks like when the tires are a little bit on the cool side that's where your problem is uh, initially Jan Engelbrecht very close to Timothy Stanton Willem Boerter makes up the position there on a Robbie Teens Wesley Lewin drops down behind a Robbie Teens as well they chopping swapping and changing and Willem Boerter does one on the Timothy Stanton yeah, that is uh, Engelbrecht, then Boerta, then Stanton is right on his heels, followed there by Briggs. This is a replay of some chaos. Yeah, he rode right around the outside of Timothy Stanton, did oh. Willem Boerta. That was a brilliant piece of driving, oh. back to the real time. It wasn't chaos, it was just, as you say, brilliant stuff. Oh, now they're busy plowing into each other there. That's Johan Engelbrecht, and he's going to be over all oh, these major issues there. Oh, jeez, these guys are overdriving these things. Oh my word, Robbie Teens was involved in that. Yes, he's just dropping down that leaderboard. Is Robbie Teens in the 223 car? So while all that was happening, Yakustain says, Thanks guys, I'll just dive across to the right hand side. Have a nice day, and away we go. Robbie Teens eventually got it back onto the track after the iRacing data decided to uh, put him on his side and. Uh, yeah, that cost him a big lot of time there. Ian Riddle also involved in a situation. Let's see what happened to Ian. Using the curb stone, comes in just a bit too hard, gets uh, helped out of the way. I, I think, think it was Swayce. Adam and Lazarus that took him out. I think it could have been Hammer and Lazarus. Yes, Swayce Hubert also in an incident using a whole heap of track and then, uh, yep, the Oreo car just turns itself around. So. A whole heap of chaos going down everywhere. But while that's happening, the man that did the backslash jump start is still at the front. Carl Lawrence, but he's been closed down by the one and only Mr. Luke Lucchese. Yeah, he's got Luke right on his case. He's got uh, Ryan Ottens uh, right there as well. There's a tenth of a second between Lucchese and Lawrence and a tenth of a second between Ottens and Lucchese. That's the two cars you see in shot there as we ride aboard with a tail cam of Kyle Lawrence going up the hill <coughs> into that tight uh, right hand that's turn number one there's cars coming out the pits as well so let's have a look and see can Kyle Lawrence hang sure. into this one I don't think so I don't think he can he's going to try he's going to have to look all over the place he's going to lose that lead surely Lucchese will drive around the outside no he doesn't but they must be careful for contact Ryan Ottens will just keep an eye on this. They are side by side as Ottens and Lucchese. Nothing between the two of them. Ottens has got the legs on Lucchese so far as they make their way into that uh, tight right-hander. Well, he's holding on to that position pretty well at this stage of the fight. No uh, sign of uh, Luke Lucchese, but the only way that we're going to probably see him is if we look back and there is Luke Lucchese. Right, uh, Luke Lucchese is sitting out there in P1. As a matter of fact, they're making their way into a very tricky little left-right kink, and then which will take them down to the second last corner of the Red Bull ring. You see that Red Bull at the back there? That's into Rint corner. Ah, oh, that's uh, named after the 1970 world champion Jochen Rint. That's the corner that they're going through. Then into the Red Bull mobile, and turn one is known as... Nicky Lauda corner and that's the corner that they're moving to now turn one with uh, Lawrence Lucchese Ottens right there that is the top three and Lucchese just assists <laughs> Lawrence uh, out of the way get out of my way boy I gotta try and keep Ottens behind me <laughs> well he's betting to keep Ottens behind him because Ottens is now up alongside him once again there's the two of them Ryan Ottens with Luke Lucchese on that inside line. Who's going to get the better drive out of the corner? It looks like it's going to be Ryan Ottens. And, uh, yep, there's Luke Lucchese there. But right behind Luke Lucchese is more traffic. It's Ryan Ottens, Luke Lucchese, and Carl Lawrence. And then it is Robbie T. Lawrence runs a bit wide. Robbie Teens in the invert finds himself way up where he wants to be at this stage of the fight and it's looking pretty good for him right now ryan ottens leads them out and uh, we are now six minutes or I'll call it seven minutes into the race it's ryan ottens that leads out from luke lucchese carl lawrence having been um helped according to frankie off the circuit there by uh, luke lucchese and then it is leon van Vleck a little bit further back yaku stain 
that he's best so far. He's in the top five right now. Been hassled here by the Batmobile of Steenkamp, just uh, under a second between uh, Stain and Steenkamp for P6 uh, uh, and 7 as they work their way around the uh, final corner. Yasamai is sitting out there. This damage on the wing of Yasamai. And he's got the Castrol car of Willem Pina right on his case. Four tenths of a second between Samai and Pina for P7 and 8. Colin Plitt sits out there in P9. And he's eight tenths of a second uh, ahead of Peter Hubert, who's the fastest man out there. Well, was now Michael Steven. He's 125.138 for Michael Steven. Graham Steven directly behind him. Robert Briggs outside of the top 10 in that 13th position. But it's getting close up front. Ottens is all over Lukizi once again. Yeah, Willem Boota is a matter of interest is now the quickest man out there. 125.058. There's Ryan Ottens in P2. He's all over the back end of the Luke Lucchese radical. Well, Lucchese can't go for quickest laps now. He's going to try and keep Ottens behind him. Leon van Wijk is only five seconds behind the two of them. So that fight is on here with uh, eight, nearly eight and a half minutes done between Lucchese and Ottens. Now, Gary, once again, Michael Steven went into the pits very, very early and he finds himself currently in P11. Yeah, I think we must actually, uh, let's have a look at those pit stops and see who's been in and the lead racer that has been in once again, Michael St Michael and Graham Stephen, as Luke Lucchese just puts up the fastest that time. You wouldn't say so because we're riding on board with Ryan Ottens and Ryan Ottens is right on his back bumper. So uh, that's a 125.04, a 125.7, 6 tenths, Luke Lucchese quicker than Ryan Ottens. And then five seconds, if we look back from Ryan Ottens, you can't even see Leon van Weyck. Leon van Weyck will be the next man in there behind him. Yeah, there he is. He's not having a bad one so far. He sits in that third position, five and a half seconds off Ottens in the Being IT car 179. Here comes Jacques Stein, and behind him is the Batmobile of Andre Steenkamp. That's in P6. There is six tenths of a second between them. Then Willem Pina comes through. Colin Plitt, and he's been hassled heavily here by Peter Hubert that sits there in P8. Then right, uh, yeah, that's the two of them. There's Peter Hubert in that Penzoil outfit. He's in that eighth position. And there's two tenths of a second between himself and Plitt that's ahead of him in P7. Then the leading man that has been in and out of the pits, it is uh, Michael Steven. I think he's going to make a play for the lead in this one with that early pit stop of his. Then it's Graham, his brother. Then it's Robert Briggs, Willem Boerte. Willem Boerte surprisingly uh, not really been right up top in the firing line so far today. Keep in mind, Timothy Stanton, one of the big hitters, is still behind him. Uh, Ryan Ottens uh, is the quickest man out there. 124.695 for Ottens. And he is four tenths of a second behind Lucchese. So Otten's not only just chasing for the lead, he's chasing for the quickest lap as well. Timothy Stanton is in a lonely 13th position. 3.5 seconds ahead of Yasser Mai. He's been challenged here. Uh, three tenths of a second by Raymond Duggan. That sits there right on his case in P15. As they work their way up the final corner. Rad racing for Raymond Duggan. Then here comes a group of cars. <laughs> Wesley Lewin has got them racked and stacked. Sandra Vakari, JJ van der Merwe, Johan Engelbrecht and Peter van der Spey all in that group making the way to turn one, Nicky Lauda corner. Wow, nothing much in that group whatsoever. Look how tantalizing it is when you look out the front window. Keep in mind, Graham, Michael Steven, Graham Steven, Robert Briggs, Willem Boerte have all been into the pits. Jakub Stein went in on the last steps, come out in the fifth highest position of the people that's already been into the pits as we ride on board with a bright green car of JJ van Amava, Sandro Bakari is uh, right in there with Wesley Lou. And Sandro Bakari is on such a high. Unfortunately, Sandro Bakari, that uh, won for the Grand Masters, has uh, now found himself quite a long way down. But Sandro Bakari has made the pit stop. The two Grand Masters that is ahead of him, Willem Pinar and Colin Plitt, have not been into the pits yet. So, can Sandro Bakari pull off a double header? Round number 10, I'm uh, sorry, season number 10, round number 7, Masters and Grand Masters. Remember, Luke Lucchese just put up another fastest lap. 
Yes, remember that Sandra Bakari was also involved in that chaos that happened out there in lap number one. There was lots of incidents going out there in lap one. Van Amerwe P18, and he's got Lewin and uh, Bakari ahead of him. And as a matter of fact, behind Van Amerwe is Engelbrecht and Peter van der Spey. That's a group of cars that's basically fighting for P16. That's currently in the hands of Sandra Bakari. Wesley Lewin is the man you see just ahead here of JJ van der Merwe and uh, Lewin is going to have a look up on the outside is he going to drive around him on the outside surely not surely not he's going to do it oh. Wesley Lewin's going to get his nose up but uh, I'll tell you this for nothing Lewin might have his nose up van der Merwe has also been challenged by van der Spey the two of them are also side by side <laughs> And Sandra Bakari says no, Wesley Lewin. And there is, oh, that's uh, Fana Merva. Uh, that's uh, in a little bit of a war there with uh, Engelbrecht. And look, it's right behind them is Peter van der Spey in P20. Willem Pina has gone into the pit lane. And that means that the next man coming through there will in fact be Colin Plitt. So the whole thing now is uh, with Willem Pina. It's Michael Stephen, Graham Stephen, and Robert Briggs that have already gone past him. So uh, that's the guys that have already been into the pit lane. So Willem Pina dropping down. The whole thing now for Willem Pina, who is uh, on his way out of the pits, is the fact that Sandro Bakari is the next man coming through. And uh, Willem Pina on his way out of the pits. Here comes Sandro Bakari. Where is Willem Pina? There's Willem Pina. Where is Sandro Bakari? That is how it plays itself out. Sandra Bakari ahead of uh, Willem Pina. That is second and third in class. Keeping in mind that Colin and Plitt is ahead of them, but has not made a stop. So this, in fact, is the fight for the lead in the Grand Masters. And Sandra Bakari puts Wesley Lewin between himself and Willem Pina. Yeah, Lewin uh, just made the move there on uh, Pina. And Engelbrecht wants to have a go as well. So does a Van der And so... Does Van der Spey, a replay here of Jakub Stein. He was in there just behind Timothy Stanton. Oh, ran a, a bit score. wide, touched the grass, and just lost some car lengths there on Stanton. That was a pretty close call, but look at this one. Willem Pina around the outside of uh, JJ. JJ giving him enough space. Peter van der Spey right in there behind that. Let's have a look from the uh, eyeball view of a Peter van der Spey. JJ van der Merwe directly in in just in front of him. Then it is Willem Pina. In front of Willem Pina is Johan Engelbrecht. That's a dark colored car. Wesley Lewin is the blue car that's just in front of that. And then uh, who's that? Oh, that? That's a car that they're busy lapping. That's the Anna Bakari in the Castro colors that moves out of the way. JJ is on the cup on that inside line. He wants to get into the top 10 for the second race. Remember, all the way down to Colin Plitt has not yet made the pit stop. Leading two men, the Stevens brothers, Michael and Graham Steven, followed through with three seconds further behind that by Robert Briggs, 7th, 8th and ninth ahead of Willem Wurter and Timothy Stanton. That's effectively your top five that have been in and out of the pits. The question is on uh, Luke Lucchese of 124.26. A 124.6 by Ryan Ottens, a 125.35. So Leon van Veik is pushing very hard as Andres Stenkamp comes in, Pity Joubert comes in, and you'll probably find that Michael Steven, Graham, and Robert is now going to jump past Andres Stenkamp and Pity Joubert. Well, we'll have a look and see because uh, both uh, Steven brothers is going to move up. Yes, Michael does move up, and so does Graham. They're now in P5 and 6 as we watch the man in P20. That's uh, Peter van der Spey. Now, van der Spey is the last man in that group that's chasing down Wesley Lewin's uh, 16th position. As a matter of fact, they're probably chasing down Sandra Bakari that's in P15. There is uh, van der Spey sitting in P20. And Peter van der Spey is 1, 2, 3, I think he's 4th if I'm counting right in the Grand Masters as Peter Hubert makes his way back out onto the circuit and that's who you don't want to be you don't want to rejoin in this group of cars that's uh, 
busy working their way around. That'll be disappointing for Peter van der Spey as he watches JJ van der Meijer, Willem Pina and now Peter Joubert. Whoops, we're going to spin this right on the edge of the track. That could be, is that Willem Boerte? Yes. Yep. Oh, good recovery. Yeah, he gets it back on the track. Well, it couldn't have been that one. It must have been, uh, must have been something else. Could it have been Yasumai? That's possible. That's a Reaper. That's a Mai on the inside of Duggan. That's Duggan and Samai. Yeah, and Samai does turn it around. So that was the... Co oh, right, now watch this. The home of close misses. That whole batch of cars, Frankie, comes past and everybody seems to miss him somehow. And there's nothing that you can do via Samai. He sits in P20 now. You're just going to watch them all filter past and you cannot do a damn thing about it except we join when it's safe. As a matter of fact, he's just under a second ahead of Herman Lazarus. Is Samai's going to have a go with him as well. However, back to this fight over there. There's Peter Hubert, P14. Is Hubert. He's right on the case of uh, uh, Johan Engelbrecht. who's on the case of Wesley Lewin. There's Peter Hubert challenging, challenging. There's nothing between them. There's a replay of Willem Boot. That's probably a replay of that little incident that he had. Is that Stanton that's ahead of him? Well, Stanton also snaking there in that replay of Willem Boerta. It's surprising how many cars have actually gone off there. Right, into the pit lane they go. The lead man, Luke Lukies is in. Ryan Ottens is in. Leon van Veek is in. So, Michael Steven, this is where it counts. Will Michael Steven go to the front end of the pack before Luke Lukies can come out of the pits? He brings with him his brother, Michael Steven. This is what it's all about, but I think Luke Lukies has got it. Luke Lucchese is on his way out. Where's Michael Steven? There comes Michael Steven. Where's Luke Lucchese? He's on his way out of the pits. Ryan Ottens is on his back bumper as well. Where's Michael Steven? There he comes over the crest, followed through by Graham Steven. Robert Briggs should be not that far behind. There is Robert Briggs and then uh, Leon van Veek. Another five seconds further back. Here he comes over the line. Timothy Stanton for once outside of the top five. And that with five and a half minutes to go. It played out into the hands of the super quick Luke Lucchese. And frankly, you've got to admit, Ryan Ottens can match Luke Lucchese. Lap for lap, corner for corner, break marker for break marker. And then also in terms of pit stops, when to go in and when to stay out. Well, we're looking at Timothy Stanton. And he's only five tenths of a second just behind Leon van Veek. That's P6 and 7. Wesley Lewin losing the circuit there for a short while. Let's on with the Batmobile. That's a replay of the Batmobile. And doing a swapper. Just when you don't want to do a swapper because they all come pouring past. Yasamai was one of them. And Lazarus was another one of that group that just went past Stiankam. Well, I tell you what, he carried massive speed going in there. As Peter van Space trying to close onto the back end of uh, Willem Pina. Remember, that's for second position in class. Peter van Spey on the back end of the Castro car of Willem Pina. Sandro Bakari is once again leading out his 10th overall, first in the Grand Masters. So Willem Pina trying his best to. Peter van Spey's look on the inside line. That backs out of it. Just make sure they don't make any contact. The thorough gentleman, the uh, captain of Peter van Spey all over the back end of Willem Pina. Ah, and just ahead of them you see uh, Peter Hubert but Captain Pete's got that inside line and surely he must make the move stick. Yes he does and he moves up to that 13th position and that will put him for now second in class for Peter van der Spey. But that fight for the lead Gazza only seven tenths of a second between Lucchese and Ottens that one is far far from done. Eight tenths of a second now. Luke Lucchese wants to try and break the back end of Ottens for Alpha One Esports. He's uh, Ryan Ottens. And a personal best day in P4 for Graham Steven, a 124.636. It's so a Graham Steven uh, closing, in fact, on a Michael Steven. That's how close they are. He's so busy, he hasn't had a chance to clean the vines yet. The first time that we see Graham and Michael together, I don't remember ever commentating on them one behind the other, to be no. very honest. No, not in real-time racing, no, definitely not. 
So Graham Stephen and Michael Stephen. So uh, Graham says, "Come on, Mikey, let's uh, let's do this and let's uh, have a brotherly fight for that final podium position." Leon van Vijk sits there in seventh position. Timothy Stanton just ahead of him, five tenths of a second between the two of them for sixth and seventh place overall. That's a big IT radical of Leon van Vijk just behind Stanton. Pinard is in that uh, 15th position and he's two tenths of a second behind Wesley Lewin. That's the two of them working their way out of turn number one out of Vicky Lauda corner. And trouble for Kyle Lawrence. Trouble for the 194 radical. Yeah, all out of shape. And uh, we'll lose a couple of positions there. Yeah, and then after that he jumped it back to the pit. So there must have been a notable damage on the car that he couldn't go any further and uh, he jumps it back to the pit so that is the end of that one 23 minutes gone there's just two more minutes to go Leon van Weyck trying to take away that sixth position from a Timothy Stanton Timothy's got six seconds between himself and Robert Briggs he's not going to go any further forward but he could go backwards Leon van Weyck is the man he's got to watch one more left to go the white flag is out and while we have a look at these two as a matter of interest the fight for uh uh, no, that fight has disappeared because there's a <laughs> bastard between them so yeah let's go back to what's happening on the track because this is the last lap Graham Stephen sitting out there in P4 you can see Graham Stephen right on the back there of Michael Stephen on the other side uh, there's 7 tenths of a second between Lucchese and Ottens as we watch Peter Hubert that's there in that 12th place just ahead of him is Johan Engelbrecht and just ahead of them is Sandro Bakari so but with the lap running out, Gaza, we've got to go back to the two front runners. Imagine if the brothers took one another out. <laughs> Not yeah. good. And that they've had a lovely battle. If you think about it, they're on very, very similar pace. But it's uh, Luke Lucchese that's working his way. Just three corners still to go for Luke Lucchese to come towards the checkered flag. Yeah, he's almost there. He's going now into that second last corner. He's got Leonardo Bacardo ahead of him as a back marker, but he's way too far down the road to cause any problems for Lucchese and for Ottens. Around the final corner, Lucchese and Ottens go towards a checkered flag. And first and second across the line will be Luke Lucchese, followed by Ryan Ottens. Next two will be Michael ahead of Graham. The brothers doing a brilliant job. Robert Briggs, one of his best to date. Top five. Yeah. Robbie Briggs finishing there in top five. Five and a half seconds ahead of a Timothy Stanton, who finishes three tenths of a second ahead of Leon van Weyck in P7. Raymond Duggan in eight. And then just behind him, Willem Boerter. A bit of a lonely one for Willem Boerter. Brilliant drive. Sandra Bakari, back-to-back -back victories. Ahead of Johan Engelbrecht, Peter van der Speek closed down towards the end. But uh, Wesley Lewin, Willem Pinar, Peter Ube, Yasumai, that's as quick as you can say the names. Hammond Lazarus, just ahead of Colin Plitt as they come across the line. The Batmobile of Andre Stienka, a very dejected JJ van der Merwe coming through to complete the last car out there. He'll be very, very disappointed. There was five hundredths of a second between Lazarus and Plitt across the line for that 17th and 18th position. Man, this was some good stuff today. Well, the first race was a lot smoother than the second one. The second one started off with the opening lap that had a whole lot of drama and uh, a bit more. And then it began to calm itself down afterwards. But uh, some great racing by the guys here at Spielberg in Austria at, as you can see, the Red Bull Ring. Well, there was something else. Look the Kizzy and, uh, well, what a lovely drive by Luke the Kizzy in uh, heat number one. Taking it from Graham Stephen, Timothy Stanton, Willem Boerter and Michael Stephen. And then in the feature, the top five played out once again. Luke the Kizzy, Ryan Ottens coming into play. The Stevens brothers, Michael and Graham from Robert Briggs. Timothy Stanton coming up there in that sixth position. Let's just go back. Where did Timothy come in race number one? I think it was, uh, well, a third in race number one for Timothy Stanton. And then follows that through with a sixth position. So doing his championship uh, no harm whatsoever. 
Yeah, then we got Leon van Wyk in P7, Raymond Dug in P8, 9th and 10th is Willem Boerte and Sandro Bakari. As a matter of fact, Sandro Bakari is your winner, winner of your Grandmasters. Peter van der Spey in P12 will finish second in class, and Willem Pinard in P13 will finish third overall in the Grandmaster category. Sure. Driver of the day? No, oh, hard to say. Um, race one was <laughs> easier to choose than 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 race two. Um, I don't know, tough. Robert Briggs didn't do half bad at all. First time I see him in the top uh, five. In the uh, Grand Masters, Sandra Bacori double header, undoubtedly. Yeah, overall driver of the day has to go to Sandra Bacori, definitely. I would tend to say the Stevens brothers. Uh, head on although that's robert briggs's best result ever so what i'm saying yeah, robert briggs driver of the day yeah I in this race in this specific let's just have a look where did you come in heat number one robert briggs i think it was a bit further down p16 p16 so for a major comeback in the second race our driver of the day then being robert briggs frankie yeah that wraps that one up and uh saturday it's going to be uh Gravel Oval at Klein Plassey Mega. And then uh, the following week, Saturday, we're down to Gulani International Raceway for the next round of the Power Series. The weekend after that, don't forget, we'll be off to the Samoa Hill Climb. Those that are not going to go through there will go through to the West Coast and that for the Snooker Patat Annual Gala, which will be uh, Frankie Hennes, the voice of West Promise Motorsport, that will be Mike's side with that one. I'll be going up to the Samoa Hill Climb. I'll leave it to Frankie to say cheers and goodbye. Yeah, but before we now get to next Saturday for the Kalani Main Circuit, we're first going to get past Wednesday. We will have another round of, as you can see on your screen, the Master and Grand Master Series. That wraps it up for this evening, folks, from the Second Gear Production Studio. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it. Spot you same time next week or at a studio, uh, no, should I say, at a racetrack in the not-too-distant future. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>